We're live, burn up. We're live. Hi, welcome. Welcome, everybody. This light's a little bright. I wasn't sure because I couldn't quite see and didn't know where look before I started. I just turned it on. Hi, Bruno. You ready to do the show? You're the host today. Okay. Teach everybody about how to make a pretty dress. What, you don't know? No? You're confused? Okay. Good morning, Danda's Junk. Let me turn down this light. Bruno, you get to be my model, okay? Stay right there. Oh, sit. Stay. Good boy. Let me just turn this light down. Hi. I don't know if that helped, but we're going to pretend it did. Big Bob's Prop. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, I got a little bit done. I got it all stitched around, so these things are actually are attached. I still have to go through and do the bottoms, but it's, they're stuck. I see my needles still hanging there. So the tops are finished. I just have to finish the bottom. <laughs> Dress forms looking spazzy, if that's even a word. You know what? I'll take it. But I have the shell in a good spot. I was going to put in the hooks and eyes today and the snaps, but I cannot for the life of me find the hooks and eyes. And I put them somewhere I wouldn't lose them. How many guys do that? Just put somewhere where you're not going to lose it. And that's exactly, you can't figure out where that magical spot was. Yeah. Anyways. Ah. Just stabbing it directly to the dress form for now. But yeah, hi. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Um, yeah, I feel like when I clean, sometimes it's harder for me to find things. Like I just cleaned, it cannot be lost because it's, yeah, anyways. Um, so I'm not gonna put in the closures today. I'll probably do that later. It's not a huge deal at the moment because the hardest part is more or less done but I do have to do the accessories. I have to get the ties. And um, for the pink one, it's going to be a very short wide tie. And for the blue one, it's gonna be a really elongated, exaggerated tie, um, basically kind of to the knees. So I wanted to get the ties at least patterned today, possibly cut out, um, but at least started. I, but before we do that, I did want to show you guys these. I did find my, um, snaps. This one's going to get closures with snaps. This one's going to get closures with hook and eyes. Why? Because it's what I feel like. There's a million ways to close anything. Like I was considering separating zippers just so I could zip it up. I was considering loops or buttons. They're, I went with the least visible options that I could. I don't know. There's no real reason, but for one reason or another, I chose to do snaps for this one and hooks and eyes for that one. Oh, geez. Those dogs are just barking. Let me turn this light down because it's super bright and close the door so that it. There you go. That should work. Close the door so it's not so loud. Good morning. I'm here. I'm here. Don't worry. We're just live. Okay. I don't know if that light helped at all, but anyways, look at these snaps. This is an old, old snap pattern. 
Look at the lady with the snap eye, it's like Coraline. These are the best snaps. Yeah, so I'm kind of excited to use these. I really like this lady with the half coral eye. <laughs> She's modern because it snaps. It's like upgraded from buttons. <laughs> I don't know. What about a zipper face? Anyways, I thought this was a really fun um, image. Yep, the easiest snap to sew. And the only snap with four patented features. Anyways, I thought these were really fun and I'm gonna be using that one for this one. But I couldn't find her hook and ice, so that's what's going on. <laughs> Big bottle drops. That's where I put my mom's birthday card. Exactly right. And does I usually track, lose track of things when I clean up? Yeah. I don't want to lose. I don't know. Sometimes I'm better than I. I fight myself on things all the time, but I all I try and work with myself and have like project bins or where things should, like. I categorize clump things and try and make keep things as keep things as transparent as possible. But when I put something aside so I don't lose it, if I don't have a spot that it's normally supposed to be, I'm gonna lose it. Let's just face it. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I have a tie, the most boring tie ever, so that I have a reference as I make these ridiculous ties of what an actual tie looks like. And I always forget how to tie a tie right before I tie a tie. But, you know. So one of the ties I want really short, like way shorter than this. Like, sh I think it needs to be about that short, like maybe even a little shorter. About that short and probably a little wider. And then the knot needs to be about here. Let me measure that so that I know how long this is. All right, it's eight and a half inches for the center front seam. I think I wanted to sh inch shorter than the waistline because I want it really stubby. Um, so I plan on doing it at seven and a half inches long. This is a three inch wide tie. Would five be too weird of a wide? Four and a half. Let's go four inches. Let me write these numbers down before I forget them all. Um, Let me share my work surface with everybody. Okay, I have paper, it's bright and white. I apologize. Oh, will we even be able to see this? I am going to put this here so this doesn't roll off the table. Okay, so my tie, I want the total length to be 7.5 inches. Sorry about people who use centimeters. These are arbitrary units of chunks. Um, I want that to include the knot to the base of the tie, the widest part of the tie, I want to finish at four inches and 
And that's a good place to kind of start. Dan does joke, my wife may finally be busting out the surgery I got her, so I may be hitting you up on Discord with questions if we have issues. It'll be both our first times using one. Good luck. Um, owner's manuals are your friend. They really know what they're talking about. You just kind of have to go through step by step. And your surgery may start from the outside and work its way inside or start from the inside and work its way outside, but thread your surgery in order. And don't forget to put the presser foot down because that's what I screwed up last time I tried to do a surgery, use my surgery live is I didn't put the presser foot down because I, you, when you go to a surgery, sometimes you can just go without having to lift up and down the foot. And I had lifted it up to thread it and I didn't put it back down and it all, <clears throat> and it's such a simple thing of, oh, I didn't put the foot down. Why is my surgery messing up? It must be, no, it's, it, it, sometimes it's just, you have to put your foot down. <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, if you make, if it's like messing up, troubleshoot, try turning it off and on again, thread it from the, whichever side to the other side, you know, from one side to the other, and make sure you have sharp needles that aren't bent, and all of those things, you usually should have a smooth ride from there. Good luck, and that's exciting, because sergers make a game changer, especially when, chain, when sewing with knits, they, just anyways. I really do like working with surgers. I just won't do it live anymore because the pressure. I can't, I, I can't. I have to be in a relaxed state and not feel like everybody's watching me because it's like a lot of threading and looping in, in a serger. And it's not that crazy, but yeah. Um, H7 Apollo, impressive work and looking good doing it. Oh, thank you. It's coming together. Like it's a little worse before it's better, but it's going to be done. These are going to be the craziest Easter dresses I've ever made. Happy Easter in three days, by the way, people. Big box prop. I had to tie a tie every day for 11 years at school. Did you just do the crappy knot that I do where you wrap it three times and flip it through? Or did you do like the fancy half Windsors and the nice and the full Windsor? Because if you have a long enough tie. I like those chonky knots that have the structure and support to them, but I'm too lazy to ever tie them. Like I can, I can sit and figure it out and I will and I do, especially if I want it to be really clean for a look. But most of the time, I just love this just sloppy knot. <laughs> but, oh my gosh, I love zipper ties. Those things. They have a nice clean knot and they just zip on and off. Those are my favorite kind of ties to work with on set. Like the, my favorite zipper ties. Um, <laughs> oh, I love it. Dan does junk says, I had a friend who'd be dressed up in full suit on picture day. It was both funny and sad as he had to wear it all day, even during recess. I know, but he still has those pictures. <laughs> so, <sighs> big boss prop, the easy way, of course, right? Um, let me get a guideline down. Let me, this one longer than my paper? Yes, it is. Perfect. can't see my whole page. I need to get a better camera set up. I'm working on it, working on it, getting better each time. It's a process. So we have our guideline. I am going to pick an arbitrary point on it where wish it had. Let me scoot you back a little bit, see if that'll help get this paper into frame. All right, get my head cropped off. Yes, I have a three head. It's okay, we'll go with it for the moment. Um, 
I am going to pick a spot a few inches down from the edge of my paper just because I don't want to deal with the edge of my paper and I'm just going to give myself a guideline. Uh, this is a cartoon tie, not a real functioning bias cut tie. This is going to be a clip on. Yeah, this is going to be a clip on. But I'm kind of really excited to do the anatomy of a tie because these are so complicatedly simple. Just so complicatedly simple and I love them. Why is there a seam here? Why is there a seam here? Why is it crooked? Yeah, right here and here. Well, it's because they're trying to save fabric and it's on the bias. Yeah, but what's seven and a half inches down from my guideline. So this is just my arbitrary top and I'm gonna go seven and a half inches down, which is right here. And I want a total of four inches wide. So. This is the space that I'm going to have a comically large tie. I think I want the knot here. I'm going to do this, like, cut it on the fold so that it's symmetrical. If I do, 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 do. This is probably going to be a good shape. Just add on seam allowances so I have wiggle room just in case. Spill water this stream. I know I didn't even bring any water this time. I have no drinks and no snacks. I it's too end phase of the project. I like escaping from my projects by going and getting a sip of sugar, you know, like that reward based get up, clear my mind, and come back to my project and just or looking up, taking a second. And so normally I have my drink just like off to the side, but when I'm live, I, I feel like I can't really. Um, I'm just gonna give myself the rest of my forehead, but I um, can't really be sipping on something while I'm working, unless it's in a bottle with a screw on lid. But you guys wanna see what I messed up? You want it? Look at this French fry. As beautiful as it is. Look at this. That's not going to lay flat. That fry has been fried compared to that side. Yeah, that's what happens if you just let water sit on it. Yeah, like dip it in sauce. Yeah, so. I learned my lesson, but the third time you do it, it goes by super fast. And 
no, it is not worth my time to sit and iron that out or, you know, just make way easier to just recut it out. But yeah, I learned my lesson. So don't worry, I'm only live. I make mistakes. So you can have, have some entertainment. <laughs> yes, keep beverages off the crafting table. I know better, I really do. The thing is, is my spilly cup, I was way better about because I knew it was spilly, but that was my cup that had the lid. So it, like I would felt like, oh no, I'm safe. I don't have to worry about it. And of course that's the one I spill, you know. So I'm just going to fold this on the center line and cut it out once on the fold. I'm ordering a ruler like that right now. I keep forgetting to. I This is my absolute favorite ruler. Look at this one's not broken. Oh, my broken one's not where it belongs. But I use it like I have an inch. <laughs> like it breaks and snaps and I, I still will use it. It's flexible. It's amazing. Don't leave it in a hot car. That's how I've lost several of these. And this ruler's I. I'm not as big of a fan of this ruler as I am for this ruler, but they both serve their purposes. And I'm not hating on this ruler. It's just the markings aren't quite as clear. Ha, it, they're too clear, actually. Can't quite see them as well. It's not my favorite. I absolutely the, love the preciseness that I get with this. Don't worry, nobody, no ruler company's paying me. But I'd be happy if they did. All right. Keep it flat and not twisted. It'll be a quarter inch smaller all the way around. I think this is the shape. I know it's a little wonky. It looks like a little fishy. But I think this is going to be the shape for this one. This is the easy one because it's the little one. But then the blue one is going to be ridiculously long to my knees. Well, past my knees. We can shorten if it needs to. But I don't want it to go... Can we make it longer? <laughs> so, yeah. Ah. Let me see. Hi. Back up tall with me over here. Cameraman right here. So. This dress form is the height of my shoulders in flats. This dress form, I took off, took it off its um, stand because it's way easier to keep it on the dress form and move everything around, like yeast and soap on all the parts when it doesn't have the stand sticking on it. So it's been my, like I've been sewing on it and I really, look at, I got the armpits done and they're flat. It's hanging nicely. I love it. Anyways, the armpits are sewn. This whole thing is sewn. But this. Yep, these are about the same height. So if this girl's on the table, I'm going to measure to my knees. 
take my boring tie. You go. Yep, right at the bottom of the camera. This is where I want it to end. So how long is this? Exactly a yard. <sighs> so I'm going to do a yard long tie. How wide to make the tie? Now that's the question. I want it to be ridiculous. I really do. All right. Hello. Let's see my table here. usually use my pattern like little sandbags to put behind the thing so it doesn't roll off the table but I'm using tape today because that's what I have all right 36 inches it's right let me square up from this end what do I mean when I say square up So I know this edge is straight. I cut this edge. So I know this edge is wonky because I just pulled. And so I can't trust that this is a 90 degree angle. This ruler is bigger than my paper, holds it flat. So I am going to make my ruler straight following the edge of this paper through the clear spot so I can see that it's a straight line and just draw my straight line in. I'm going to pick a different color. Um, something you guys can see. Let's go purple. Okay. I am square and straight. Double check this. And now I know that this line and the edge make a right angle. So that is where I'm going to start my measuring tape at this end. measuring tape at this end so that I know from here, 36 inches down, oh, something in my I have, at the costume shop, we had a measuring tape on the edge of our table. We would use that to um, size the men's suiting and stuff. At the, at the bridal salon, we had measuring tapes on the edges of the table. So we could reference about how much fabric we were going through because we would tr keep track of how much fabric we use per dress. And I am surprised that I don't have just a measuring tape edge of this table. I'm not going to put one on anytime soon, but it is a glass table and I could totally just tape a measuring tape right under here. Eventually, but um, so let me square up this side. I have how far down I am, but now I want a right angle so that things don't get super crazy. All right. Stay. Okay. I can fit this 
yardish in here. ridiculously white do I want to get this? Now, scale is what's ridiculous about this. So I know I'm kind of hemming and hawing over. Oh, it could be whatever, like, size and shape. But, and I can recut it one out. But I'm trying to think of, like, so we have a wide shoulder nipped into a narrow waist so it's like an arrow and then this one I think is just going to have like some kind of less is more on the bottom not a giant skirt where this one's gonna have a big circle skirt um this one's going to have a long tie I think I want it to be about right in the princess lines here. Princess lines. What are princess lines? If you divide your body in half, you have a center front and center back. And then if you divide yourselves in quarters, you have side seams. So center front, side seam, center back, side seam. Now, you divide yourself into another set of seams, divide those halves in half, and you get your princess seams in your front and your back. Yeah. And so side seam to center front, halfway in between that point is your princess seam all the way up and down. That's why it's a curved seam and it changes the shape because that's how you contour through your body. Um, I really like my dress form because I have reference of where my princess seams are and how wide it is so that it's kind of the width of the narrow of your body, of the center of your body. Okay, that's really confusing, but it's very helpful if you're doing like armor or style lines and things like that because you have the like where the lines of the abdomen go and such. So it's the princess seams. I know it's not the most masculine of terms, but I like it. It always made me happy. So, and I think down here, Six and a half inches. Dan does jumps. Uh, thanks for explaining. You referred to that a lot, and I forget to ask what that is exactly. Yes, reference points. Reference points that you can take direct measurements from the body and put them down on paper so that it's like correlating flat patterning to a three-dimensional object. References in space. 
Um, yeah. So that's six and a half inches. Half, I'm doing this on the fold, so I'm doing it on a half, half of six and a half inches, three and a quarter inches. But I still want to do that about six inches up from the bottom. That's six and a half. Let me use. I love and hate this ruler because I really like the convenience of it having this purple line, which is the seam allowance, but it's also really annoying having that purple line seam allowance. It throws everything off. So, six inches. I am squaring up from six inches. This is my top. And this is my end. Um, three and a quarter. And that goes to the point. The top knot, I want to do a solid two by two. Like, I want to give enough to have a good knot. <coughs> These are the same tops. It's going to be fit the same in there. So I'm just going to copy this knot and then trace down there. Um, except for this already has the seam allowance. So I'll just draw in half an inch from that line. Here's Spooky trying to get in here. Oops. Oh, well. I have some widgets. Let me add seam allowance. Have all my seam allowance drawn in. Let's see how this weird shape turned out. This, I don't know if this is going to be the right shape. I might have to try this again.
I think this is fun. I really do. I have, excuse me. down right here. Same color, but completely. Oh, I think it's so interesting. Well, this tie is going to go in this one. And this tie, look at this pink. Look at that. It's going to go in this one. You know, I think I can go lighter now that I'm holding it up. Now, let's, now it would be a tongue. I think I like the white that I have, but. Isn't this fun? I have. Let me just fold this up over here. I'm gonna have to steam this because it has all these wrinkles from just sitting in the cupboard, waiting, waiting on me to get to this part. Strings are tangled everywhere. The fuzzy kinds. The ghost string. Jeez. Okay. I was like, oh, I want to sip on my drink, and there's nothing to drink because I'm behaving myself today. Um. I'm thinking of what I, of how I want to do this. So a regular tie is lined and it's folded in on its, so it's like, that's the best way I can explain it as opposed to doing a front and a back and a side seam because this is um, a makeshift tie, not a real tie. But I know I can get away with that with the little tie. It's the big tie that I don't think I can get away with it. I'm trying to think of the of how I'm gonna construct it because it, it doesn't need to be as complicated as a regular tie. It doesn't need to be bias cut. It just needs to be the right shape and hang from here because it's not wrapping and being knotted. I'm going to be adding a fake knot. And I don't have enough to cut this on the bias if I wanted to, just FYI, because that takes a lot of fabric for just a tiny little piece. I'm going to interface it. I am debating whether I'm going to use the heavy canvas buckram I know I'm not going to do cardboard because although it's really crisp and clean for this part I want a drapey tie 
that's why I'm kind of leaning towards doing the the canvas, like the heavier weight, um, just woven fabric. It's how we want the the tie to look like in the end, and I think, yeah. The little one, I think I may want to cut out of the buckram, but I think the long tie, I want to cut out of the canvas, the cotton canvas. I'm saying that out loud, but I'm I'm debating myself in my head at the moment of whether I'm, what the benefits and downfalls of each one are. big bobs props and pretty yes look at the pops of color it just reminds me of candy jetsons just fun times i think this is going to be a great time but i'm going to think of how i'm going to construct the pink the long pink tie i can make a few mistakes on the blue tie because i have plenty of blue fabric and that pattern is <laughs> already lost. I'm sitting still and I already lost it. It's my scrap. This is this one. Oh, there it is. I knocked it off the table. <sighs> yeah, I can fit quite a few in here. So if I mess it up, oh well, and I can figure it out again. I knew when I got this that I was going to be experimenting a few different ways. Can you guys hear that? Versus this. Yeah, there's two different sounds. It's higher pitch this way it's the stronger sound and this way is the weaker sound or the deep anyways the strength of my fabric goes up and down it's not as strong in the least so if i lose track of my salvage edge i can figure out which way i'm going um Don't cut fabric with the rest of it hanging off the edge of the table. Just fold it up in a pile. Oh, I gotta show you guys this. Let me pin this down first and then I can. What is this? Well, Easter's coming up. I don't know everybody celebrates it, but I was starting to make Easter baskets because I thought it would be fun. This is just 
one that I started to make. And then I was like, you know what? I think it'd be even more fun if we all, instead of having an Easter egg decorating contest, we had an Easter basket con decorating contest. This one's just kind of, I was testing it out, so it's not really sewn or anything. But I have cardboard with the handle that I'm gonna give to everybody and we'll see what we end up with. I think it could be really fun and really cool. How I did it is I measured a six inch strip that wrapped around, I traced a dinner plate that looked about the size I wanted and I measured the circumference plus about four inches so it could overlap two inches on either side. Gave it six inch tall walls and half an inch up from the edge I slid it every about inch so that I could do it to the bottom I just taped the seam because I glued it but it wasn't holding and so I taped it to hold the glue but super easy peasy and I figured that we would have fun Decorating these however wanted to. This was me just goofing off them. Oh, if I made a little tube of fabric and put it inside of here. And then to in, push it down. Anyways. Hot glue guns are going to be used. That is a hundred percent sure, but that's what I plan on doing Saturday. Yeah. Plate Easter baskets. <laughs> Dan this one. Maybe I should make a mischief bunny ears and basket for my Gundam since I'll be Easter weekend during the con. That would be hilarious. You could figure out a good Easter egg. That could be your business card. I don't know, I'm just making things up, but yeah. Definitely getting into the festivities. Let me... but it's buckram. I don't want to fold it. It won't look good. Yeah, I'm going to end up removing the seam allowance from this interlining piece. I'm still just considering how I'm going to construct this. How I'm going to make it stay together. way this in half so I'm cutting two at a time and I don't have to cut this a billion times I just cut a heavy duty fabric and now I'm about to cut a silky fabric so but I find fabrics that scissors that can cut heavy duty fabrics aren't necessarily the same scissors that can cut the silky fabrics 
but on rare occasions, I find that I have a pair that easily can do both. Yes. And these are the pair that have been cutting cardboard, silk, velvet, all the tricky fabrics easily. No breathing. There you go. Now I can. Okay, I'm going to trim off. Oh guys, you know how I spilled water all over my project at the end of the last stream? Last night I spilled glue. All over the circle skirt. At first I was like, okay, well I'll just scrape it all over, but because it was a spilled, it made it, it warped the, the cards. So I got new card. That's why I'm like, I'm not even looking at the skirt today because we're not friends at the moment. Oh, here's my broken piece of ruler that I love. blue thread. I swear I was just marking seams so I can see them so I actually have to make my bobbin thread the correct color.
winding my bobbin. Thank you. And then you bobbin. about the metal bobbins is that they stick in my magnetic everything. Okay. I may have to change my needle out because this needle has been used and abused and try. If it's terrible, it's terrible. We'll move on. I'm just basting this to the interlining before I sew the two pieces together. So it's as flat as it possibly can be and doesn't get all messed up. Gets all So it doesn't get all wrinkled up and moved around and I know it's gonna be exactly where I want it to be. Anyways, it's already shifting a little bit, but it's doing great. I'm leaving the top open on this because I'm going to flip it up. I don't have to, but I'm going to. I stitched it all around so that these two pieces are one piece. And now I'm going to trim off this heavier part out of the seam allowances. So I debulk the seams out of this edge because it looks like the easiest one without cutting the satin, I'm going to just trim as close to my stitch line as I can without my stitch line without actually cutting off of it. So that there's still seam allowance on the satin, but not necessarily on the buckram. Don't want to get the satin. I only want to get this back. So see, I trimmed it on this side, but I didn't trim it on that side. 
You coming in, Spooky? Okay. Spooky decided to join us. big pile of white lace right there and he is a black furry cat. Spooky! No! Come here, Spooky! Spooky! You don't need to get in there! He found my little bag of pattern pieces. Ah, I'm not getting as close as I was on the other side. Does junk says hi. He is now annoyed that I shut the door that he's stuck in here with me. Cats do not like it when doors are shut. They like access in and out at their convenience, not yours. Okay, geez. It's all trimmed down now. Good. Now I'm just gonna turn my machine off and on again to reset the stitches so it's at the um, 2.5 stitches every, is that every inch? I don't know, it's about 10 stitches per inch or something like that, but. Let me stick these together. I didn't use pins last time. I'll use pins this time because now I'm sewing satin to satin. And when you have two silky, two silky fabrics, when you put the right sides together, they slide around super easy. But when you have um, their back side together, they don't slide as much, but the two silky slides are super slippery. And needles are my friend. I've done a lot of hand sewing, so there's a lot of tangles now <laughs> in my pins. Okay. All right, got the sewing machine in place.
I'm just going to cross that one. So I reinforce the um, stitching at the tip as opposed to folding around that corner. If I cross it, I'll have more stitches supporting my um, sharper corner turn. Hope that makes sense. out easily or if this is just like oh no let's back to the drawing board and figure out a better way it's not going to turn easily i know that already uh -oh. this curve here Just cut off Look at the little fishy as a mouth now. I just cut off the um, excess bulk in that corner so that I can fold this edge over, this edge over, and it gives me a nice sharp point as opposed to bulky nub of too much fabric in there. And probably we still have to trim some away. And what's really nice is unlike the velvet, I can iron this. I can press it. The velvet I couldn't. Pressing things makes them look professional. You smoosh it and you smoosh it and you smoosh it. bone folder just for this purpose and I've had it in this thing forever and it's not there now that I'm like oh this is the perfect opportunity to use this very specific tool oh. dork knows it is you just have to be careful that you don't stab through your fabric mm -hmm. Hmm. Austin Lips is here. Hi, good afternoon for me, but how's everyone? What did I miss today? Well, welcome, Austin Lips. Um, I finished hand sewing the tops of both the pink and the blue. The blue is more or less finished as far as the color goes. The pink one, I still have to um, do the bottom stitch down. I have this side started you can see my needle and thread where I stopped and then this one's not as clean of an edge but anyways I did that hand sewing when you when I wasn't live you know and um now we're working on the accessories this pink one's going to have a short blue tie and the blue one is going to have a long pink tie 
and I am currently making the cutest little tie right now. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? I am going to take another piece of silk and wrap it around the knot and probably sew it behind it and then give some leading lines. But let me put my curves in here. So this is a little nicer to me. Looks like a mess. Give me a minute. It'll get better. A little worse before better, but it'll get better. Yeah, that side needed it. This side needs it. What am I doing? Okay, so it's not laying flat right at these curved spots because the line, the seam allowance in here is smaller than this side. So I have to put little slices in it so it can spread and lay nicely on this curve. And if I don't do that, I'm going to, it's going to not lay flat. So I have to trim the seam allowances so that it has room to lay flat. <sighs> um, push this to the side. What about the ironing board? Yes, I let somebody borrow my ironing board. Can you tell? Okay, I don't want it on melt. Doesn't need to be going. Hmm. Austin Lips, how's your day going today, Felicia? It's going quite well. It's sunny, the weather's nice out today. It's been some awful weather lately and it is just nice. I got all my big stuff more or less done. Uh, so all in all, I can't say, can't complain. Where's my... Hmm. Yep, Easter is in three days on Sunday. Yes, it is. Saturday, I plan on doing Easter basket decorating with everybody. And then Sunday, I plan on eating way too much food. Mm-hmm. That's the plan. Smoosh and you smoosh and you smoosh. It's yellow fuzz from the velvet.
There we go. That's much better. I think I still need to clip it. When you're sewing, you're supposed to press, not iron. What's the difference between pressing and ironing? Ironing wiggles a lot more. Pressing, you just smoosh it. So I'm trying to just smoosh it. And I really wrinkled up this understuff, the interlining when I turned it inside out. But I do know that it will steam right out. Do I have my, is there water in this thing? I don't always put water in it if I'm like ironing paper. Yeah, I don't think there's water in it. Otherwise I would. piece that is the knot and I want to give it some poofiness some dimension I would suppose let me this isn't as flat as I want it yet it really isn't my iron's not super hot so it's taking longer <laughs> Mm. Okay. I'm definitely liking this. I don't know if this is the technique I'm going to do for the longer tie because I don't think it'll translate as well. I think it'll probably be better if I wrap it as opposed to um, sewing it this way. But for this little tie, I think it's perfect. I need to do this knot part. Let me turn off the hot iron by unplugging it because I always forget to. And put it out of the way so I don't burn anything. And I need this up. Okay, let me see. Take my pattern piece. stopping at the bottom of where it bends plus a half an inch. Now I'm going to fold it on this line. The seam allowance is already built into this much of it. So I'm just adding the seam allowance to this one, but I'm folding it up so that when I cut it out, it will, you'll see in just a second, be cut at the right angle. Here. 
Get rid of all my scraps because scraps are confusing. Often they look like pattern pieces. I'm just going to draw on my seam allowances so I know that they're there. They're there. Oh, there's people here. 45th Clown, hello, wall. Um, how's everyone? Didn't manage to cut out of work early this time. That's okay. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. Um, hello, Wolverine Scratch. Hello, Austin Lips. Okay. Yes, people are currently at work. Good for you guys. Hoy, I am getting hungry. It's not lunchtime. It's not even near lunchtime, but I'm ready for lunch. I didn't need to add seam allowances, but I did. So I have. I didn't need to add seam allowances, but I did. So I have. Actually, I'm going to add this bright. I have my piece that I'm going to cut out of polar fleece and satin. And, um, I'm thinking of how I want to pattern this. I did not pre-think any of this. This is me making it up as I go. I'm making up the stuff, so. Figuring out how order of operations, how I want to attach things, how I want to sew things so that I get the thing that I'm wanting to do. There's a million ways to do anything wrong. Forty-fifth crown. Second breakfast is a thing. Yeah, it being so close to Easter, I just want to eat deviled eggs. Um, Austin lips. The dress is starting to look better and better each and every day. Good job, Felicia, on the dress. Thank you. Yes, it's they're slowly coming together. I need to put the closure on this one so that it can close in the front. Need the closure on this one also. There's a curtain in there. Um, yeah. I need to do the skirt on this one. And I think that's the part I'm avoiding the most is not working on the skirt. I have it all figured out. I have it all patterned out. I have to cut it. Where I stop on a project is cutting the fabric out. That's where I get let myself like um, overly stall because once you start cut the fabric out, it just kind of falls together in my opinion. But cutting out the fabric is the most commitment of the project because now you're stuck or you have to get new fabric. And I never get new fabric. <laughs> All right, let me see. I have pink polar fleece, I have yellow polar fleece. You're not going to see it, it's just I don't want it peeking through. Here's my scrap bin. Fabric from the scrap bin. Polar fleece is that soft, fuzzy blanket fabric. I absolutely love it. It's going to give the floofiness, thickness to the knot, like it's a tight knot. Enjoying these scissors. They are titanium scissors that I got from um, Costco like a while ago last Christmas in a three pack. These things are 
the best. I have used and abused them and they still cut cardboard, silk, polar fleece, velvet, all the tricky stuff. Normally I wouldn't use the same pair of scissors to cut satin as I would cardboard, but titanium scissors are an exception. I buy them because they're meant to do that. All right, let me get... This pattern piece, this ruler, <sighs> the end of the show, I'm getting hungry and might not be able to wait for lunchtime. I know I'm hungry too. Um, Austin Lips, I had a sandwich for lunch. For me, it's 1.32 p.m. here. Nice, sandwiches do sound good. They really do. All right, my straight of grain. I know that my cut edge, believe it or not, is straight of grain because I tore the fabric. I ripped it. You know that satisfying sound when you rip fabric? It always tears straight of grain. So if you see somebody tearing fabric at the fabric store, it's not being disrespectful or screwing up the fabric. I know that people have gotten upset like when you go to the cutting counter and somebody tears your fabric, you're like, what are you doing? Straight grain. Fabrics that are woven, they will tear straight of grain. Not necessarily a twill weave or those complicated weaves, but a basic weave will. And then I know for sure that this is a line I can square up on because the grid matters. It makes a big difference. Austin Lips. I'm in Ohio. It's 58 outside and cloudy. 45th Clown is in London, UK. Big Bob's props. I just had pizza. Ooh, pizza does sound good. I think I want pizza. Either that or a burrito. You guys are making me even hungrier now. Slippery, but it's okay. I got it. Yonalith, I can't believe I made it. Hi, everyone. Welcome, Yonalith. I know that this is a little early for you, and I appreciate that you made the effort to come. Thank you. How was breakfast? The end of this junk. Californians live in the past compared to most. Yeah, I know. I'm <sighs> able to carve out a nice evening slot to do live streams, and they just didn't. Doesn't work for most of the world, apparently. Okay, this one can go. All right, I'm making my sandwich, and I have to think about the layers that go into the sandwich. I want the fuzzy part to be in the middle when I'm done. And I want it to be satin on the outside. So I put my two right sides together on top of my interfacing. So it goes interfacing, fabric facing up, fabric facing down for this sandwich. That's how we're gonna make the sandwich today. It's not as good as a bologna sandwich, but it'll look pretty. That's the important part. I'm 
meine Pendels. I need Pendels. Um, it's too early, yes, but I'm usually offline until 11. I've been up since 8.30. Wow. Um, okay, let me focus on what I'm doing. <laughs> Go welcome. Nope, that's not right sides together. That's looking weird. <sighs> Sometimes. Right sides together. I'm probably not going to trim out the bulk of the seam allowances. We'll see how it looks when I flip it. And I will increase the seam allowance a little, I mean the stitch length a little bit because I'm going over the bulkiness of the polar fleece. Um, let's start with this side. Last night I was up talking with Dan, but did go to sleep around 11 p.m. I was up pretty late stitching these guys and just kind of getting lost in project mode. Yeah, I definitely stayed up a little late. It happens. But good morning. Schultz Division's here. Hello, Schultz Division. Only here for a short amount of time. I'm waiting for a cousin to stream some gaming content. Ooh, fun. All right. Let me, I'm not going to trim off all this bulk, but I'm going to trim these corners so that I don't have funky big giant corners. Inside out. Yes, smoosh and smoosh and smoosh. I have to sew both of these top edges, but I think I'm going to stitch it down here and up here together. <gasps> That's how I'll do it. I'll stitch these wrong sides together, flip them up and around, and then this I'll just tack down with a hand stitch so that I'll leave a loop here to thread it through. <sighs> Did that make sense to anybody? <laughs> okay, let me just... Make sure this is thoroughly smooshed before I can't get in there anymore. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. 
Yeah, no, so when do you have to ship out these dresses? When they're finished, in all reality. Um, this is one of those projects where it's better that it's somewhere that I'm happy with than make sure that I meet a specific date and time. However, that being said, there is a model booked and a studio booked coming up, I think like next week or so. Or coming up, it really is. I have a text message, I have to look at it. But um, they're gonna be wearing a different outfit that I did, but, but if I could get this done soon enough, then they could do the shoot too, is the actual plan. So my goal is to get this finished this week. It doesn't look like that's going to happen really easily, but that is my goal. And I only have a day left this week, tomorrow. Um, yeah. Wrong sides. Okay. Right sides together. Right sides together. No, I don't want right sides together because I'm going to flip it to here. So it needs to be finished this way. And if it's stitched, I'm just trying to figure out this pattern before I make it. <laughs> so this is the way it needs to get sewn together. So this is my front. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, that's why you make stuff on stream. We understand <sighs> my art live as it's coming out and being figured out, I suppose. Welcome. Um, Dando's Junk is going live around 6.30 or 7 tonight, maybe. So keep an eye out on Dando's Junk's channel for that. <sighs> yeah. I feel you, Dan, only able to stream at night and in the evenings. Thing, living at the wrong side of the world. It's inconvenient for everybody at that time. I understand. Okay. okay. All right, this is nice and bulky, so I'm gonna do the full basting stitch. Now they remind me of the aliens on the Muppets that go meep meep. The wah wah wah. I like those puppets. Meep meep. Uh, that's a thick fabric we're going through. Now let me clean up these ugly edges. I think I'm going to do a zigzag stitch. Oi, I need a new needle if I'm going to do that. This needle has been used and abused. It's gone through cardboard, plastic, all 
sorts of things. Here we go. Okay. You know, has it started smoking? No, it's just going cook clunk. The needle's not going through the fabric easily. And I know that I can solve this issue by just replacing the needle. Um, majority of sewing machine problems can be solved by replacing the needle. So I know that this is a dull needle because I know what I've sewn on the sewing machine and I have not sewn. Been nice to it. Where's my screwdriver? I need my screwdriver. I don't see my screwdriver. Tweezers, it's not a screwdriver, but it did the job. Okay, dull needle gets thrown away in the garbage. Never save those. I just don't because I don't want to reach into my grabbing needles and grab a one that I've replaced already. My mother had a habit of just putting the needles away. Save them because she might need them if she's going to sew paper. And I'm like, just use whichever needles in your sewing machine. Sew your paper and then replace it with a good one. Anyways. That's my rant. I feel much better. Okay. Oh, yeah. All this excess. Oh. Okay. I got some bulk in here, that's for sure. <sighs> when you start to get crazy amounts of layers of fabric, it doesn't feel like it's a lot of fabric, you know, it's not like this giant and I'm, but, It adds up quick. Okay. I'm gonna fold that over like that with the little tie. You know what? I don't want these corners sticking out.
Okay, good question, Neonolith. Will these have clips or will you be making it with loops? Okay, so I'm kind of doing them as a clip on tie style, but I just, with this piece that I just sewed, have a loop now that I can thread on a, um, I don't have a piece of just, I don't have a strip yet, but I can thread through to pin up into it is the plan. So that's kind of what's happening, but I need to stitch this and I don't want to do top stitching. I just want to use a needle and thread so it looks nicer. Okay. Let me thread a needle live. It's okay, I've threaded my sewing machine a few times already. Uh -huh. DJ Stumpy, hi, just tuning in. How much have I missed? Uh, I have got the hand stitching done. So these are attached. They're no longer just pinned in place. I have it all stitched together to the armpits. So it's laying all nice. It is all together. I have to do the closures, but I have to find my hook and eyes, but I, I have my snaps. I need to find my hook and eyes. And then I can put in the closures for those. And then they're not going to have to be just stabbed to my dress forms. Um, but today I'm working on the ties that go with them. I patterned both ties and I'm going to try and at least get this blue tie done today. I'm not going to get the pink tie done right now, right away. But Yeah, sorry, can't tie a knot and talk in complete sentences at the same time. So this pink one is going to have a short blue tie and this blue one is going to have a very long pink tie. And the, went with the short tie because I figured this one was the easier out of the two to start with. I am going to stitch in these corners because I want it to be prettier than this. And so I'm just going to stitch at these corners about a quarter of an inch. Oh, are the twist it there? Yeah, but I'm going to stitch it for a quarter of an inch to just make these corners pretty because I will hate them forever if I have to keep looking at them. Nobody else will see this, but I will see it and it will bother me. You know, like that Muppets on my brain because of Adam Savage and the velvet is giving me ideas. Yep, I was gonna say, somebody else had mentioned Muppets earlier. I think it was Dan. These look like the um, meat meat Muppets. Yeah, they also give me Jetsons vibes, like futuristic cartoon. Definitely like the color. Hmm. Okay, let me tie it off on this side now that that looks so much better. Where's my there's little birds get these little threads.
you know, it's because I've been thinking about ideas for y'all's puppets. Yep, I have to go. I have to grab my rescue my puppet from Odin's workshop. He's been reorganizing and moving things around. Should go grab that one before it gets stuck in storage or something. Okay. See how nice this corner is compared to this corner? Yeah, I'm gonna do that again. Yeah, I've been at this for two hours, so I think I'm going to call it here tonight, today. Um, what I plan on doing off screen is finish stitching around the bottom edge of this. I have it stitched to here, but I have to go all the way around because this underlining is um, needs to be stitched down. It's glued in place, but it just needs to be stitched in place and it'll look much nicer. But plan on doing that because that doesn't seem very entertaining for a live stream. And then I don't think I'll do the hooks and eyes where you guys can't see because I kind of want to see show you guys how I'm going to plan on closing these weird things. Um, but I probably will cut out the skirt, the circle skirt that I'm working on because there it's just too I have to spread out in order to cut it and I have been avoiding it and if I get that skirt cut out this project's going to be done like that and that is the part I'm letting myself get stuck on cutting out the fabric as usual you know so will you be making the skirt tomorrow as well yes that is the plan I, if I can get that skirt cut out we can make it I just have get it cut out and I have been avoiding cutting it out because I've been overthinking that swirl pattern. Yeah. Um, Schultz Division, I'm off. Have fun, y'all. Well, thank you for joining us, Schultz Division. We're glad you're here. Um, Boy, fifth clown, thank you. Enjoy today. It's looking fantastic. Oh, I appreciate you. That makes me feel better. Clean corners. Ouch. It's okay. Neon look. Ooh, swirls. I know, circle math times three and all connected. Like, I really, I think it's turning out great. And I really like the pattern, but I am definitely overthinking things and I just need to cut it out now at this point. But after the glue fiasco, I was a little disheartened. Austin Lips, good job on your dress project today. See you soon. See you tomorrow then, Felicia. Have a good day. Bye, Austin Lips. Appreciate you stopping by. Um, when I'm done hand stitching this, I'm going to probably call it a stream. But I have to actually stitch this to get it done. Uh, you know, I've already cut myself, so I know how them feels, LOL. Oh, careful. You need your fingers for holding scissors. I'm just going to say that oh, this corner is not as pretty as I the other side. Huh. I thought I heard spooky but I don't know where that cat disappeared. I know he's still in this room with me. All right, let me trim off these little extra fuzzies.
<laughs> DJ Stumpy, Adiana with cheers for sharing the Muppets love now. I'm now singing the theme on the bus. Gotta love the Muppets. Mm. All right, let me pop this corner out. Hide my first stitch. Ah! I am already twisted. Two stitches in place to lock the stitch. Because I already know that knot can't hold it. It just popped out a second ago. Okay. Do the Fraggle Rock theme now. Love it. Ugh. It is very much a cartoon look for today, isn't it? Oh, nose grease. Ew, gross. Nose grease. What's. Yeah, now it works. It gets the needle going through this so much easier. It works. Ooh, Iona, I need to watch all of that in Dark Crystal. Oh my gosh, when I was little, the Dark Crystal used to give me nightmares. That thing that go, mm. <laughs> I love it so much, but oh. Those things used to scare me. The sexies or suck. Anyways, the sucky thing. I also like the labyrinth. That one was fun. Almost done. DJ Stumpy. Dark Crystal film freaked me out as a kid. Not going to watch it. Not going to watch the series. Oh, it did definitely freak me out as a kid, but I'm totally down to watch the series. The sexies, the sexes. Yeah, those creepy things. Ah, I got a knot. I have a knot in the middle of red because it twisted <sighs> it's always the last inch of sewing like you have just this much more to go and that's when you get the stupid mistakes or you run out of thread or it gets knotted Ugh. anyways I'm not going to struggle with this right now. Ugh, I have to cut it. I really do. It's okay. Mm. 
You know, they were meant to represent vultures. They always gave me vulture vibes, so that makes a lot of sense. Dan does junk. I just suffered the blue screen of death. Oh no. Hope your computer's okay. Will you be able to stream later today? Blue screen of death. Okay. Motion, 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 motion. Okay. Now I just really need to steam and iron this so that it just is popping. Okay, so there we have it. I have a tie on with a loop in the middle of it so I can hang it here. Not bad. These are going to have hooks and eyes holding it together. Yeah. I just pinned it in place. I think that's what I'm going to call it for a day, for today. I know it's all bunched up, but that's because I put the pin in the center. But I made a teeny tiny tie, and I have my pattern for this tie. Yeah, I feel like this will be a good tie. I'm gonna call it project at this point. Um, hopefully I get my skirt cut out so we can get that done tomorrow. Otherwise we will for sure get this giant tie done. But thank you for joining me. Thank you everyone who is here. I appreciate you being here and supporting me. Um, I am trying to go, I'll try and go live tomorrow morning. Make sure you have your notifications on if you wanted to, if you want to do it. Um, thank you. Any questions before I go? Enjoy your lunch. Yes, I'm hungry. I'm going to go eat some lunch. All right. Thanks again, everybody. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. And